You want the inside scoop on what's going on with premiums for both silver and gold? Well, you came to the right place. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Oh, I really appreciate it. Make sure to, to like this video and maybe even hit the subscribe too so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. But premiums, Yankee, what's going on with premiums? I get more emails, more texts, more DMs and Instagram. Everybody wants to know, with spot so low, why do I have to pay so much for this stuff? If I can even find it, it's very frustrating. So I thought I would find out the answer from my local coin shop dealer, Tim. A little over a week ago, I went in, met the Green Mountain Boys, oh, Ira and Alan. They came all the way over from Vermont <laughs> to check out Tim to buy some gold and silver. You know, I asked him a few questions, and then after all that's been going on, I wanted more answers. So I called him. Uh, you know, social distancing and all. And I did an interview on the phone with Tim. In fact, you're not going to want to miss it. So so don't bail out on this uh, video uh, early, okay? He answered uh, my questions, and there were some really, really good answers he gave around premium. So make sure you watch this video all the way through. And let's go. Here we got Ira on the right and Alan Green from boys. the green these are the green mountain boys we're visiting next door we're here you're here to buy some metals that's <laughs> smart man the metals are down yeah how far did you have to travel uh it two hours yeah it was a little over two hours oh my um, goodness but you know it was worth the trip uh, i'd like to meet a little bit of the community we made a few videos on the way talked oh, about a really? few things yeah. oh great yeah well that two hour commute is great for just getting your head in the game Especially for us too, it gives us a little focus yep. with all the distractions. Sweet. Yeah, well we're stoked to meet Tim and check out the shop. Hey, Tim, hey, I'm uh, recording you, man. You're protecting yourself or everybody else? I oh, am no. wearing an N95 mask and I am protecting myself from everyone else. I'm fine so far. You're not, not practicing to rob I am not going to rush star. Well, <laughs> these guys are from our community. Green Mountain Boys to call them. Ira and Alan is their uh, uh, YouTube name. Yeah. And they, uh, they're they actually the ones that I did the Yankee Swap with, uh, Alan. Yeah, I grabbed a buffalo off you, and then a quarter American Eagle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I did a tube. You did oh, a yeah. tube. First, yeah, you just started, yeah. Yeah, first purchase. Yeah. Wow. I got a stack of American Eagles. I got a yep. stack of Eagles, yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun to do that for them. 2019. But now they don't want me to be involved. They want to come straight to you. <laughs> That's fine. They're done with me. <laughs> yeah. I've been working with a wholesaler all morning, and things are really getting, they're tightening up. They are. And um, you know, I was I was trying to get an idea of what the pricing would be. Uh, he's not ready to divulge the pricing. Right. He's going to wait to the end of the market, end of the day, to, to the see day. What the, where the market falls. Good. <laughs> It depends on what they have shorted right now and what the timing is and what they've been trying to pump up because um, the pumping is not working. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that they, um, they're probably pushing on the shorts to make up for the ones that they, they can't make go up. Right. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a tough market. It's never been quite like this. So when you have a, you know, a, a blip is no longer a blip, it's an explosion. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's way overblown already. And listening to Christine Lagarde try to kind of talk her way out of a difficult situation. She's now, she used to be a head of the IMF, now she's uh, president of the ECB. And um, they don't have any tools. Basically, You're right. you know, in between the lies and the, you know, the sidestepping of all the questions that she was being asked, what she basically was saying is there's nothing they can do. They can't do any stimulus. They, no. you know, they, nobody wants to buy their bonds. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they really have nothing they can do. Do you have any gold on you? I do have some gold. <laughs> yeah, today I brought a little gold pin. Oh, you're not selling that, are you? Well, We'll buy at the current what? price. I'm not what? sure we can sell it. You're, you're not selling that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I 
have an idea. Oh, you have an idea. Oh, oh your buffalo's gone. <laughs> yeah, I had buffaloes. Oh, I took, um, I showed them that picture. I've had two buffaloes since last week, and they both went out the door. Yeah. People love the buffaloes. Yeah, like the guy that bought the last it one, is, really his, his choice was between the uh, maple leaf and the, and the buffalo. And <clears throat> he said, you know, I don't have a buffalo. But he really fell in love with the maple leaf. I don't know what that yeah, the, He just looks like a really good, good one. Well, yeah. 24 uh, carat. It's gorgeous. My goal is to bring a maple leaf home today. Um, and in my little stack, I have one buffalo, one eagle, and hopefully I can trade my other eagle for a maple leaf. You think I want to get some silver? Otherwise, I was like really tempted. Aaron showing me, was like, they have a buffalo, and I was like, oh, that's, once I saw his, I was like, I really need to get one of them. <laughs> you want one, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. How about silver? What, what silver interests you what type i, I should know. say you know i'm a pr i'm pretty new to this compared to you and definitely you know compared to to alan here and definitely right. compared to to you guys but i'm glad to say you all that i have but yeah i don't think it would make up even a two yeah really. uh, that's what you said last time oh man you tapped him out well i tried <laughs> yankee <I did. laughs> uh, these are what he wants oh he wants those yeah yeah i mean a goal of mine today would be to leave with these two my 2020 stack needs to be fine-tuned, so I don't need to worry for the next, you know, eight months of the year. Well, you guys are preppers, too. Yeah, because I have other things to focus on. Right, um, right, exactly. It's not just precious metals for you exactly. guys. I'm relying on him for all the for all the gold. Uh, once I... <laughs> oh, I see. Next year, once I it skyrockets, see. It's not I'll being buy. a prepper. It's knowing who the prepper is. Yeah. Buddy, uh -huh. up with it. You just love that maple, don't you, man? Yeah, I do. Flip it over. I like the other side a little better. Canada flips this way. Yeah, I don't need the old hag, but that maple leaf is <laughs> so iconic, dude. It is, it's you got to walk out with that. Yeah, she's pretty. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I I, I will do that on the twenty dollar uh, with the trade. I gotta go. I gotta get back. Oh, uh, elbows, pumps. Wait, right, guys. Nice to meet you. Really fun. Thank you. Enjoy your silver and gold, man. And in person, thanks for all, the all these other purchases. Oh, yeah. well, I'm, I'm pleased to have been able to help as much as I can. Cool. Take thanks care. So, Tim Marshner, uh, owner of the Coin and Stamp Shop, is on with me. So, thank you so much for joining, Tim. I appreciate it. Anytime. All right. Yeah, you're just. I'm going to tell you right now, you're my favorite LCS dealer. <laughs> and I don't say that to every dealer either. No, I really do appreciate you. I, you, you definitely give um, some incredible deals. You work really hard for your customers uh, to keep them happy. I've witnessed it. I've seen what you do for people, and it's really it's incredible. And I enjoy your, your knowledge and uh, just talking with you. So thanks a lot for doing this. Well, we see uh, Yak stacking <laughs> followers in every day. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Every day? Almost every day. Almost oh every day we get somebody who's, who follows you. Wow. Hey, so, so how are you doing, first of all? You you staying well, healthy? I am, yes. Um, I've got <laughs> lots of uh, wipes. I've got, um, I clean up after everybody. <laughs> wow. Everywhere I go, I make sure that everybody else is clean. Oh, that's great. You see, and, people, um, you see people coming in with masks? I have had people coming in with masks. You know, you're not the only one. <laughs> and. <Good>. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I'm getting used to um, elbow bumping and uh, keeping a distance. You know, I don't have to put my glasses on to see people. <laughs> so, actually, that, that leads me to my first question. I'm really curious if this whole uh, social distancing has affected your business. We definitely see fewer people. But um, m most of the people, or I should say everybody who comes in, uh, at least in the last two weeks, are everybody is on the same page. You know, they all know that they are, um, you know, the re true currency is uh, the hard metal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everybody's trying to plan for the future and they're buying gold and silver uh, instead of toilet paper. <laughs> well, there's no more toilet paper to buy. <laughs> I think that's probably the reason. Gold and silver makes a better currency than toilet paper. <laughs> no argument there. So I'm going to ask you the big, big question that everybody keeps leaving comments on and texting and emailing me and all that. It's the silver premiums. Dude, why are they so high? 
Well, uh, it's, it's all relative. It's a relative question. And I, I, let me give you a relevant answer to the relative question. Okay. Uh, and I guess the, the question is relative to what? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Going back to the 1600s, this country was founded on one basic principle, and that's uh, free enterprise. That's why people came here, you know, over you know, great obstacles to get here. Um, is because they, they came from, you know, dictatorial governments, they came from monarchies, they came from socialist uh, governments. Mm. And this was the one place in the world where you're, um, you could reap the benefits of your hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but th this has always been a going back as far as the beginning of the United States of America, a free market economy, and um, you know individual enterprise, free enterprise is what built this country. Uh, what we're seeing now, because I don't know if you remember the uh, 1987 uh, stock market crash. You were probably about six years old then. I think. I, I'm too <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I do remember it. No, back then. The individual investor got spooked, mm -hmm. and um, that's where people were cashing in their stocks. They didn't really care what they were cashing in, but um, they were they were afraid that this was going to snowball, and it did. Um, the individual investor is uh, irrelevant now. Uh, the markets are controlled by hedge funds, and uh, what we're seeing is, you know, with hedge funds, basically it's a pump and dump operation. They pump up stocks, and then they short them. And, or they pump up commodities and then they short them. And you know, when they cover the shorts, they make huge profits. In this case, we had kind of a perfect storm. We had the, the virus hit. Um, it looked like it was all China and everybody's kind of laughing China off. Um, but then Saudi Arabia decided to have a dispute with Russia. So they went to uh, full production, which uh, crashed the price of oil. Then people started to, uh, to sell out. So the hedge funds that were trying to make profits on shorting things, mm -hmm. we're now having real trouble. You know, they had margin calls, um, the stocks they were trying to pump, you know, were not working. They were, mm -hmm. they were able to get the, you know, the commodities they wanted to get up to an area where they were gonna short them. So mm -hmm. that kind of all fell apart. And now mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're taking the, the, uh, the easy hits, uh, the items that they can really bash down. So when they cover those shorts, they can make up for some of their losses. Silver is an easy victim. It's relatively cheap. You have to go a long way to, um, to have a naked short in silver. And if you just take all the uh, coin dealers in the, in, this, in the country who have 100 ounces here, 1,000 ounces here, um, you've got you know, probably a million ounces out there before anybody's going to question whether or not you, you've got a naked short. So they, you know, a naked short would be uh, something you're shorting that you can't prove exists. And, um, you know, there's a lot of silver out there. So, you know, they can get away with murder by shorting millions of ounces. So anyways, that, that's what's happened in the paper market. The paper market is, has no connection whatsoever to the real or physical market. What we're seeing is, um, you know, this thing has gotten way out of hand. The economy is, is driven by hedge funds. Money is getting uh, phonier and phonier every day. But what we've seen in the physical market is a return to the basic principles of free enterprise. That one, the fundamental principle to having a free market economy is supply and demand. And what we're seeing now is, you know, what little supply that's out there, uh, the owners of that supply aren't willing to part for it with these, you know, these paper silver prices and the buyers are willing to pay more for the uh, for the supply than the paper silver prices. So the premiums so, may seem uh, high, but people are willing to buy that at that price. That's right. They're real premiums. I and mean, mm -hmm. you shouldn't even call them premiums because it's basically it's supply and demand. It's the interaction mm -hmm. of the two basic principles of, of uh, free enterprise. I think the silver will stay in that market. Uh, for a lot longer than the paper market is able to keep it down. Hmm. Now, is the paper market going to catch up to supply and demand? Not, not without a lot of pain. Hmm. And it's not just silver. There are other commodities that are in the same boat. But there is less supply out there. <clears throat> the U.S. Mint claims they're on, on a, a, a shutdown temporarily for, right. uh, because of the virus. Canadian men is shut down. Yeah, so that, that's going to restrict supply on those two items. Mm -hmm. um, 
any of the you know the dealers or wholesalers who have you know one ounce, five ounce, ten ounce bars, hundred ounce bars are not willing to part for them at the paper prices. So they're holding their prices up. And, you know, what I've been finding out day to day is there actually is a fair amount of supply out there. Silver Dragons and I are going to be interviewing SD Bullion in uh, a couple of weeks. And one of the questions we're going to ask them, I want to ask you, are you holding anything back in inventory, not selling, waiting for a spot to increase? No. No, and I I set my premiums based on what I I talk with a wholesaler that I go to mm-hmm. two or three times a day. You know, we I picked up let's see, what was I what did I get the other day? I guess I got sixty five ounce bars that a customer of mine had ordered. Um, he exchanged three hundred ounce bars to pick up sixty five ounce bars. Mm-hmm. We did this right before the you know the market went totally south. It was on its way down. It was probably in the 14 range, and you know that was a, a fair exchange, except that the premiums were lower on the 100 ounce bars than they are on the five ounce bars. So he coughed up a little money to make up mm-hmm. the difference, and he was thrilled to get them. But you know what the whole wholesaler has been doing is calling me every time there's a change in the premium, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, one of the conversations I had with him sitting in the car, they would look like a drug deal in the parking lot. Um, I said, I've got, I still have a couple of hundred prospectors. What should I be selling them for? He said, all right, I'll survey the market. Prospectors, what else? And I said, you know, I'm seeing online that some of the big dealers are selling Silver Eagles any date um, at 5 to $6 premium or in the case of, I think, the the 2020s I've seen, seen for 25 or 26 dollars a piece, which is so much higher than they wow. traditionally would sell for. Exactly. Um, so some somebody is holding on to um, inventory, waiting for the paper market to catch up, and that's kind of a fool's errand um, because all that does is keep the premiums up for everything else. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If the markets weren't constrained by people holding on, you know, and it's probably a big deal. It's probably big wholesalers mm-hmm. like the you know, what the U.S. Bank calls master distributors, they're probably holding up the pipeline just because they, they can't get any more from the mint. So the, you'll see the Eagles stay up around maybe $25 a piece. You, you had mentioned your wholesaler. So what, what is your wholesaler's availability like? Uh, is he constrained too? Is he seeing it, you know, right up the food chain here? I guess the best way to answer that is I have... Um, Several hundred American Eagles on order. I've got Maple Leafs on order. I've got uh, one ounce, five ounce, ten ounce bars on order, and we don't even have a schedule. So he, he's not holding back because he likes money. <laughs> have you ever seen it like this before? No, but it, it's never been like this before. I mean, it, we have never been in a <laughs> situation point. except for you know going back to um, maybe 2008 because the hedge funds were in control in 2008. Mm-hmm. And we saw the same kind of collapse, except for so many bailouts, there wasn't the same fear. There was no virus going around at the same mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. There was no uh, oil war going on between Saudi Arabia and Russia. Mm-hmm. This has been kind of a perfect storm. I've got all this stuff on order. I have no idea when, it's, when I'm going to receive it, if ever. And uh, wholesale is in the same boat. You know, even junk silver, which I, I, you know, two weeks ago, I had a lot of it. I had the equivalent of three bags. Now I'm down to probably a bag. Um, and I've been selling it in small quantities, relatively small quantities. But um, he called me on, I guess it was Friday morning, and he said the price has just gone to 12.5 times space. Now he had called me on Tuesday, I think it was, and said it's 12 times space. And yeah. I said, is that what you'd sell it to me for? He said, that's what I would sell it to you for. Then he called me and said, no, I think it was Thursday yeah. Um, there was the 12.5 times phase, and the last time I talked to him was gone to 13.5. Now, compare that to the actual silver content, which is nine times phase. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say this market, the, the physical market, is operating on supply and demand. And you know that's that's the basic principle that it should operate. If you're on. betting on gold, the paper market, you know, keep up your no connection to supply and demand. You're, you're and that's why people are seeing this, this 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 huge divergence here. They're seeing the paper markets, and they're not seeing it reflected in the physical markets. Yeah, <clears throat> go ask somebody who's sitting on some silver if they're willing to sell it for, you know, junk silver for nine times space, or you no. know, the the um, an ounce of silver for thirteen dollars. 
that that is a side question I was going to ask you. Are you seeing people come in much and selling their physical metals? No. Good. And you know, unfortunately, the refineries, anybody at the top of the chain is going to go with the paper price. They don't have any choice because they all hedge at the top of the of the price, and the hedge is a is a paper hedge. You know, if you uh, if somebody takes thirty bags of junk silver down to a refinery, they say, you know, I can't find any buyers for it, so here it is. They're going to give them the paper price. They're not going to say, well, the demand is very high for these, so we can get a better price than that. Uh, that just that's not the way it works. The uh-huh. higher you get up the chain, the more they adhere to the paper price, because they have to move things every day and they have to hedge every day. And then the lower you get on the food chain, like me. <laughs> We have to put up with a supply and demand price, mm-hmm. but that's free enterprise. And that's what our country w- was founded on and works on. So I hope that Absolutely. doesn't Absolutely. The economy in this country was founded on free enterprise. Where Where has the premiums been with gold versus silver? Has it been as uh, dramatic uh, a difference between you know physical and uh, paper? Have we seen it you know, hold more steady? Well, I sold, uh, let's see. Three yesterday, two today, one ounce gold American Eagles mm-hmm. for exactly the same premium as before any of this started, $40 over. Wow. Here's the fact and that nobody, nobody seems to be paying much attention to. Gold is a barter currency between nations. Mm-hmm. Silver is a barter currency between individuals. So, you know, lots and lots of individuals can affect the price of silver it takes countries to affect the price of gold. So when you see gold dropping, um, there's always somebody waiting in the wings, China, India, Japan, Russia, ready to buy it when it drops below whatever they want for a strike price. Mm-hmm. So gold hasn't really fallen that far. Gold, gold has fallen from its uh, recent high of, I think it was 1687, mm-hmm. has fallen 12.5%. Silver, on the other hand, from its recent high of 1902, mm-hmm. has fallen 50%. That's the difference. Silver is cheap enough so they can bash it anytime they want to. They can't bash gold because China will just turn around and start buying it. Or India or you know Brazil or somebody, anybody will turn around and start buying it. So I had one person in my uh, in the community email me and said, "Yankee, I'm uh, I, I really need more gold. I don't know though, with all that's going on, if I should just wait. Is it going down much more? Should I just you know start buying now?" And I, and I said, "You know, I obviously I have no crystal ball there, but in my opinion, I thought that gold was not going to go down that much more. And I was just curious if you agree with that. I agree with that." The original deal on these American Eagles I had was uh, 40, mm. and um, I have seven left. Seven so left. a lot of people are, are <laughs> understanding that uh, gold is not going to drop a whole lot. Man, well, gold so dropped 12.5%. That's nothing. Yeah. I know. I, I hear you. And, and But I also want to tell people that you need to definitely stop by and see Tim at the coin and stamp shop. He's got how many left? <laughs> how many gold left? Seven. <laughs> so, all right. Seven yeah, he's on 300 Granite Street in Manchester. He's a great guy. He's a wonderful shop. Uh, you know, obviously, if you have stay-at-home orders, which, Tim, I don't think New Hampshire doesn't have. So um, I think I think you could still pop over and see Tim, and he can hook you up with some silver and gold, right? Or at least gold. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, until the National Guard shows at my door and tells me I have to close. You've got to close, right? You're going to stay open. Well, yeah. good for you. And I might actually have to get over there and get some of that constitutional silver before it's gone. So, yeah, it was surprising how, how quickly it's gone out the door. But, um, uh, again, people should realize the physical market is supply and demand. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the paper market, uh, those guys are completely out to lunch. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking some time and doing this little interview. I really appreciate it, Tim. Well, it's been fun talking with you. You All right. Get your mask on and come in someday. (laughs) You're right, man. I'll be over. I promise. (laughs) Okay. Bye-bye. Pretty cool, huh? Boy, does he know his stuff. And I find it very interesting what he thought of gold. Let me tell you, this may be the time to build your reserves of gold. While we still try to find this at a reasonable price. (laughs) All right. Well, so thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, like and subscribe. And I hope your day is.
is A-OK. -okay.